All right, welcome to the Thunk Tank podcast. Look at that. You're off to a great start. You didn't fuck up the name. Yeah, here we are. This is the real episode one. We've done at least 10 fake episode ones that have been complete and utter failures. Oh, fake is less. Actually, I would say more and less. They they happened. They were beta episode ones, let's say. Uh, But there were also other episodes. Like, we got up to episode eight before we realized that all of that was unerrable. Yeah, and by unerrable, we mean, like, we ate cheeseburgers while we were eating, (laughs) pretzels, peanuts. Um, I knocked over the microphone many times. I've knocked over the table. We definitely got too drunk uh, every time. So anyways, this is our first real attempt at real, real episode one. This is it, yeah. Um, This is live. I'm Luke. I'm here with Joe and Johnny Skyping in. Yo. And... I suppose let's just start with what the fuck is a podcast? Like, like like the dictionary definition? Well, Joe, what is a podcast? Like, why the fuck are we sitting here recording a podcast? Because we're in the future, man. And the also, future is now. I suppose before we go to that direction, it's called Thunk Tank Podcast. Oh, yeah, the name. If it's not obvious already, we're thinking. That's the idea. We're also drinking beer. Yes. And so when you combine Correct. think and drink, you get... Well, you get drunk, but you also get thunk. You get thinking drunk. So it's the thunk tank. It's like a think tank, but with beer. It's most, pretty, it's, it's mostly shouldn't beer. it be the thrink tank then? Oh God, no! Or the we, thrunk, thrunk we tank. Spent, we spent too long discussing this to to not to change know it, it now. Yeah, I think yeah. episode one would be a failure too... if we just um, <laughs> change the title. We spent quite some time before we, we hit record. In, in all you're right. We'd have fairness. to run it by legal again or whatever. Right. right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's called the Thunk Tank Podcast. And you'll hear this sound unedited a lot. Let's get that close. We won't try to hide that that's what's happening. Joe almost just sprayed beer on the microphone. I sprayed beer around the microphone, which I would like to call an episode one success, officially. Um, Oh, it smells really good. So I suppose we should get in the habit of starting each episode with just quickly saying what beer we're drinking. Yeah, that's fair. I like that idea. Then we'll get into the whole business of whatever we're going to do. Right. So I'm currently drinking uh, Mosaic Hero by uh, Cigar City. I'm sorry, by Revolution Brewing. I was going to buy Cigar City. Uh, I don't know if I've had this beer before, so I'm about to find out how good it is. Joe, what are you drinking? I've got the single cut. It's a, uh, I think it's New York City, right? Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. New York City beer. Um, I single cut it. It's, you know, it smells, it has that same, like, very fresh, like, uh, Kind of like citrusy, uh, like IPA well, smell that it, that I like is, so much about San City too. Yeah, yeah. It, it is an IPA, right? As the style, yes. it, single it, cut. Okay, it is an IPA. Yeah, and uh, well, it smells fresh. It's our boy nice Johnny, beer. as far as I know, is drinking some of his own beer. Is that right? I am. Uh, I'm drinking. It. It was supposed to be a California Common Steam Ale, but uh, after I started, it sounds like brewing, a sex position. I know, but you think about Anchor Steam. It's like that kind of beer. Um, huh. Okay. But instead, I ended up uh, dry hopping the shit out of it, and I couldn't get enough of the right yeast. So it's just a really like malt forward, uh, light pale ale, but it's pretty tasty. And uh, yeah, I made it. So you know, go fuck yourself. Right on. Uh, so that's fair. We're drinking that, and we'll be thinking, and hopefully putting out something that's halfway useful to any of the people who happen to be listening to this. Our many fans. Yeah. Which I've told you about. They're they're listening now. All right, which is so very exciting. I jotted down some ideas on like why I like podcasts, but oh shit, we were supposed to do homework. Oh no, I just jot down ideas all the time in my okay. notes app in my Cause, phone because I went to the gym and then bought beer. You know when I jot down ideas most is like I go on a run and then when I like stop running at the end, a lot of good run ideas. Yeah, r- ideas kind of flow and I just write them down in my phone real but quick. But you have to run like I, like I can't do it like at the gym. I have no ideas. Like my oh, you're sitting flying. around other stupid you're, people. You're in a fucking you're, you're you're out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not, but if you run like I run in nature. Like and if yeah. you run like around in nature and like even like to get to nature, like I gotta run past houses and shit. Yeah. Like you'll notice stuff. That you never noticed otherwise. Right. You'll be like, I didn't know this yard had a fucking windmill. And in you it. get where a little bit of like that runner's high exercise thing where it sure, like yeah. it, it it trips out your thinking a little bit, often in a good way. So Joe, what so, what is so, uh good unique, good, useful about podcasting? 
Well, so I have an update because I've never listened to a podcast until yesterday. Whoa. What? Yes. What? I don't even know. What? Yeah. You, Let's you just let you, I don't even. That's okay. just not true. I've listened to them with you. You have? Yeah. Were we thunked? Probably. All those Ricky Gervais ones with Carl Pilkington. Those Dude, technically, that was like oh, in the first count. wave yeah. of like podcasts coming out. That was, that was quite we some listened, time ago. That's why I don't We listened remember. to every single one of them. I used to crush yeah. that when I was in high school. Yeah. It was great when you're going for a run or something. Yeah. But I did listen to, I was listening to, uh, did I send you the link? It was Joe Rogan with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard talking, that one a while ago. Talking yeah. about uh, conspiracy theories. But... He was sort of playing the devil's advocate, Joe Rogan was, on like um, the moon conspiracy theory. And but I, I and I really liked it. So what I liked. It was very healthy, yeah. Yeah, and what I liked about that was that like that was kind of, because um, I've seen like a million interviews with somebody like Neil deGrasse Tyson. And what I liked about that medium of the, you know, the, the podcast medium was like the way that Joe Rogan was able to approach the subject. And like you say, like, I think healthy is the right word. And that's sort of the idea that I like behind a podcast. It's not like an interview that you see on like CNN or something like that, where it's like, you know, there's the pre-approved like points, like right. talking points that we're going to go and through. pre-approved lengths. Yeah. Of and what and you, you see what, exactly. Yeah. We cut off at certain times and I noticed like watching it where, Neil deGrasse Tyson is, like, so used to just, like, hearing these claims and then just being like, no, 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 that's ridiculous. Like, this is science. This is how it works. Right. And Joe Rogan would just kind of play on that and be like, yeah, but think about it this way. Like, think about how, like, these people who aren't as educated, you know, who don't have as higher of an understanding of science as you obviously do because, you know, that's you're, you're in a very elite echelon of, you know, uh, scientifically minded people, right? And, like, trying to put him in that, like, perspective, which, like, I've never seen anybody else do in an interview with him. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's sort of, like, you, you see him, like, he's laughing, he, like, at times he's laughing because he's, like, I feel like, you can tell he's thinking, like, I feel like this is so ridiculous. But he starts to get it where he's, like, yeah, of course you could think that. And it's not even about just saying, like, oh, it's either a conspiracy or it's not. It's, like, well, what if some of the footage happened to be fake because right. they weren't sure if That's they were able to land. That's possible, too, yeah. And, and you, you realize, it's like, you see Neil deGrasse Tyson being, like, Okay, like he goes. Let's it, you. You could see the wheel spinning in yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson's mind. By the way, we're referencing. Um, he's been on the Joe Rogan Experience a few times. I think this was the first time he was on. They went into a whole back and oh, forth about the moon landing oh, conspiracy. Um, Joe Rogan, I think, used to believe that he, he mentioned the moon that, landing yeah. was a conspiracy. Yeah. This time, it was a little bit tongue in cheek. Like he was just yeah. like he was devil's advocating. Just yeah, devil's advocatinging. Um, and it's cool. You got to see a mind like Neil deGrasse Tyson's like have to not just say, yeah, we went to the moon because isn't that so obvious? Not, he take had to it, actually, not take it on faith. Yeah. Yeah. And he had to actually say um, like the thought process of why yeah. you would not land. Take, take on... us through for the people who aren't endowed with that innate sort yeah. of ability that, that he give he the has. conspiracy its full credit of like yeah. you don't have to be completely stupid to think that but yeah. here's why you shouldn't think so that. So for our purposes I think that's why I like the idea of a podcast like really thinking about that in that way because it gives you a chance to like step back take a breath and say like alright let's address this from all sorts of let's perspectives. Let's break it the right? fuck down. Yeah break it the fuck yeah. down. See where that leads you. Yeah so when Luke said he had jotted down just something about what like the reason to cast or like what the purpose of it is. That's pretty much what I like the main thing I was thinking about, which uh, I mean, Rogan's great. He, he mentions it several times about why cat podcasting is great is the long form discussion doesn't really exist yeah. in media or content unless you actually go to like a lecture series, mm. uh, like in person, which you can do, but they're usually very specialized and, you know, not very like not frequent. And you can't uh, hear them on your way to work in the car or something. Well, See, that's the thing. The idea of a podcast was you could download like long form discussions to your iPod, which yeah. is why it's called a, a podcast. Even right. Though Originally, I don't, yeah. I don't know anyone that uses a fucking iPod anymore. They either have they just an iPod. just took on this thing. name. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Right. It's, it's kind of like in the ether of history. Let's be honest. A podcast like, just means online radio type show. Sure. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. it's like saying, oh, what did their EP come out? And it's like, well, it's not an extended play vinyl record anymore. It's a direct right. to digital release. But, um, but, now with that, now with just the access to the content, there's more uh, hunger for it. So it's like I, when I make beer, for example, when I homebrew, it takes about five to seven hours the whole day, uh, and you can listen to like three or four full couple right. hour podcasts in that time. That's usually what I do, 
And, uh, you know, it's just cause there's, there's that demand for it. People are, you know, jobs are really shitty these days. I've had jobs where podcasting is, is great cause you can just, do you work with like your headphones in? Yeah. Or, or I do that even uh, at work when we close down and I have stuff to do after we yeah. close, I'll, right. I'll pop a headphone in one ear and then just, uh, you know, do what I got to do for a couple hours. Especially when you're brewing, because you should know exactly everything going into the brew day. What ideally, uh, what each step's going to be. Right. So, so you just kind of put your headphones on and go on autopilot. Also, uh, certain podcasts are good at like you can multitask, so you can sort of be doing other stuff, and you won't, you don't need to sit there with like 100% attention on the content because there's a general. Because the spacing can be so long. Because it's not, it's not quick hits. It's you not know, it's as not dense, a quick yeah. Seven minute video where I'm going to try to explain my whole book to you. Exactly. So every sentence is so yeah. key. It's, you can yeah. kind of have an ambling conversation. So you can about, have it running in the background of your but, mind while you do other shit. But, uh, I mean, we're almost 10 minutes in, and not, right, so far this is a podcast talking about podcasts, which is a little <laughs> too meta for me. Well, um, but but it, that's a good point that you bring up this idea of this kind of like long form discussion or long form discourse which like i mean more and more like how seemingly obsolete is that today when you think about just like you know buzzfeed articles and twitter and well you know just all the noise that people just need more 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 what's great about podcasts is people go and do other people's podcasts so so much content is like uh cross-pollinating for you it, but I just mean generally so much content is like curated for you. Like every, any sort of social media, there's algorithms to show you what you want to see. Because, you know, it's a marketing thing. You know, you're yeah, not going to – it's going to decide what is interesting to you rather than just give you random access. It's to going to put things that you're stuff. likely to click on your news feed yeah. or Twitter right. feed. Right, whereas yeah. – And everybody does that. Facebook, YouTube. Even, you can listen to a podcast that an algorithm might think you like these podcasts too. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But maybe they have a guest on that an algorithm would never consider. And you're like, well, that guy was different and interesting. I didn't even know I was looking for this. Right. And I found, found a lot of my podcasts that way. I get that uh, a lot from um, – I'll hear about a podcast on something I listen to, like Very Bad Wizards. I um, listen to – it's a podcast with a philosopher and a psychologist. And there's another podcast called The Partially Examined Life. And the psychologist was on that one, so I was like, oh, I'd love to hear that conversation. But how much are they paying you to say this right now is the real question. As of yet, nothing. As of yet. So it can only go up from here. It our, can only our, get better. Our self In fact, this, this episode one, as of now, is a net loss in terms of the cost of beer We're in the going tank. In. We're, we're, we're yeah, in the but, tank, We're yeah. definitely in the tank. But that's what's great about it is you consider actual operating like cost. You don't have to... Print CDs, right, you know, right, print right, out a hundred million yeah. CDs. You don't need a studio. Up shelf space, try right to now, sell them. we're recording we on. Um, well, obviously Johnny's coming in from Skype, and we're on a Zoom H2 recorder. That sounds not fancy. the best sound quality, but it. I, it I, I'm good. a musician. I use it for that. And me and Joe got drunk once and recorded ourselves, and then we thought we should keep doing this. And I mean, let's just. Just, if I'm being honest here, because we might sound like douchebags to some people, this probably isn't going to go anywhere. Probably in its oh, 100 percent not in its so existence. It maybe it doesn't. People yet. listen to it, but yeah. the, what's great is we could just do it for fun and not, you know, worry about the result and just. Oh, I can't believe I started it. an LLC for nothing. Oh, oh crap! God. I just got to cancel the the lawyer I have on retainer. Yeah, no, I need to but redo what, my. What I'm saying is, you, you can just put it out there <laughs> and just let it let it hang right. there like a big fresh turd the whole time and. Let right. people come to it and find it if they're interested. So wait, are the people it, flies in this scenario? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. We don't yeah. have to put like money up front to publish a podcast. Yeah. I mean, you literally can. Right. Yeah. Like we no, have. There's no investment overhead. The only investment I made was beer, buying yeah. some beer, and, and you, I would and have done that and hung here. out with Joe anyways. Yeah, you would have drove here with beer regardless. Right. So, yeah. That's yeah. Honestly, this is an excuse to have. The kind of uh, ridiculous long form conversations over beer, which is what we used to do when we all lived near each other. This is just an excuse to make us do it again, right? Because uh, we've had some weird, interesting discussions around fire pits and whatnot. And sometimes it does take uh, an hour or so to get there. Yeah, um, but don't undersell us. We got, we got, you know, street cred. We got, oh, no, we got cred. Musician, but, professor, brewer. I mean, that's you know, so. 
Same so thing. My vibe towards podcasts in general, so we can stop talking about a podcast on a podcast, <laughs> is yeah, this. that it's every, really like Joe already said, every issue has a long version and a short version. Sure. And there's so much out there that, that um, gives people the short version. Sometimes, literally, even a one word, like soundbite version. And most issues in reality are way more complicated than that. So a podcast is sort of like an excuse to sit down and work out your thoughts. Because thinking is usually pretty muddy. Your mind is filled with contradictions. And you have to bounce your ideas through healthy conversations to like work out what the fuck is going on with reality. Right. Otherwise, you'll be stuck thinking that the moon landing was real. And then what do you do right. from there? <laughs> or fake, whichever one. <laughs> well, whichever you believe. It's like yin-yang. You, <laughs> you should be able to... That's the shape uh, of the moon. I think that's the big part of it, too. This is just my last thing I want to say about it is, like, people have a hunger for interesting conversation and, and, and you know, it, you can't always get that in your personal life. Like, right. I know that I know most people knew, are married to someone boring, their friends are boring. Yeah. <laughs> well, their I just, boring. not, yeah, that too, but even like someone that did have it, like, there's people that don't have it in their life. They just don't have people they could talk like that with. Right. And so it's nice to hear it, uh, well, and then it helps their brain. They're almost, it almost, t- right. like when I'm in the car listening to podcasts, in a way, I obviously am not talking to the people, but it almost feels like I'm participating through listening because and I have my own thoughts. Because your mind is going through with the yeah. thoughts with them. That makes sense. Because, yeah, yeah, mentally your brain is you, thinks it's part of the conversation. It doesn't know these are, it's pre-recorded. Right. It just thinks you're listening right. to a conversation. I just can't bounce friends. my ideas off of them, but I bounce them off of my own friends in my own conversations influenced by these podcasts i have to be perfectly honest listening to podcasts like definitely changed like who i was as a person i got access to information that i don't think i would have otherwise heard yeah and often yes you can't get like the full expertise version of a topic from a podcast but it can get you down the rabbit hole yeah but yeah if i'm only going to invest an hour into a subject i want an expert in that field to be able to you know, ch- hang out and explore it and be like, well, let's unpack this first because I know we're going to have time to get to this. So, and, and you, you get, you definitely get more access. I agree with you, Luke. When I moved, uh, like away from all you guys, I have some friends here, but I don't have a lot of people I, you know, can sit around regularly with and have long rambling discussions where I know no one's going to get offended. Like when we would, you know, we would regularly explore ideas and, and devil's advocate something we totally didn't agree with just to make the other person prove a point. Like that's a fun right. exercise. It's almost like a mental yeah. a mental exercise challenge where right. you're like, but, I uh, agree with you, but I want you to actually explicitly work out your thoughts to be higher resolution. Which is not something that a lot of people are, are trained to, to do. Well, so Joe, well, you well, teach writing. I think that's what writing is. Even if you have an idea in like a hazy, cloudy form in your mind, to write it in a good paper means you have to work out that thought to be clear, yeah. concise make sense, be yeah. logically consistent. I, it's funny you say that because I literally had a conversation with somebody or this afternoon, a student I met with, and it was it was along all those lines where she had a paper where she was analyzing somebody's argument in an opinion article in a newspaper. And the whole point I was trying to convey to her because she w- just wasn't getting the assignment. And when I finally sat down and broke it down, the way I did it was explaining that it doesn't matter whether or not you agree with the point that the author's trying to make. It matters whether or not the reasons how they make that argument make sense to other readers. So, like, you have to, you know what I mean? Like, subjectively, like, what that opinion is, like, that's all fine and great, but unless that opinion can be transferable or relatable to people who maybe disagree with it, there's no point in writing about it, right? Yeah, so if you mean like the preaching to the choir idea. Exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's like, easy to preach to the choir yeah. about God and religion because right. they're the fucking choir at your church. Yeah. It's harder to convince myself, who's like agnostic atheist type, right. about what you're saying. Yeah. But if you're saying something uh, really good, yeah. then I'm listening, you know? But you, wouldn't you, and that's the point, like you would rather, so uh, say you're an agnostic atheist, right? Like you would probably be more interested in listening to a very compelling argument about God and why God is real as opposed to kind of a very like base level, you know, superficial argument for why it's ridiculous God. Sure. Because I've heard that like back in high school, like those were fresh arguments when I was hearing like, you know, the atheist perspective, that was a fresh argument. Right. 
now it's like if I hear the the yeah. low resolution version of atheism, I'm like, all right, cool. I actually, I I've gone deeper than that, and this is not even interesting to me anymore. Right. Yeah. I'm actually more interested, like you said, in hearing the perspective of somebody who has the opposite of opinion. I'm, as I'm like fascinated by that. I'm, yeah. It's, I'm like. More I think that's a healthy that. yeah. um, state of mind to be in to be fascinated with people who disagree with you, not angry at them, not um, unwilling to listen, but fascinated. Like I'm a human. You're a human. How did you arrive at the opposite conclusion? Right, yeah. What life experiences and, and, and it's, personality it's a, it's types journey, led you there? Yeah. That, that how do you how do you arrive to that perspective? And when you start to unpack that, you get some really interesting paths that take you also, to those perspectives. Very similar paths, right? Sometimes, yeah. Definitely. Including like life is a difficult like ordeal that every human at some point. It's also crazy. Gets, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Insane. it was like age twenty five right. for me where I was like. He, holy shit, like, life is crazy. Like, what are we dealing with here? The old quarter-life crisis. Yeah. <laughs> now I, well, no, you don't know how you're long you're going to live. That might have been your half-life, your mid-life crisis. <laughs> That's true. Fair enough. Might have been your late-life um, crisis. Fuck you. Yeah. It well, might have been my, like, five years before my death at 30 crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's still time. Now I, now I think we should pull back a little bit, because I was saying we were being too just vague and meta, and then we jumped straight to, like, God and reality. Sure. Uh, so maybe we could just work our way up to that. Well, how would you suggest we backtrack on this? Because I'm totally... So um, I, I we generally had some ideas for segments. We did, yeah. They're, they're, they don't have to be too strict, but just kind of things to keep the conversation on a general track. As the beer goes down our mouths, our ability to steer distinct. the ship it's called perfect. the Thunk Tank Podcast will, um, let's say, be altered. It starts to veer... Uh, uh, I would like to refer to it as uh, transubstantiation, please. We transubstantiate into a new podcast. Isn't that some, like, Isaac Newton fucking shit? Yeah, the Bible was all about it, too, but... Uh... Oh, it was. Oh, that's, like, uh, the body right, you know, of Christ, let's go right? With trans let's go with transmutation. That's easier. Wait, what's the one with the body of Christ becoming... The bread becoming the... Is that that, tra that's, that's transubstantiation. Transmutation is just, like, turning lead to gold. Or turning okay, a turd that... into a diamond, which seems more uh, within our wheelhouse than like becoming divine. I mean, so let's, go with, garden, trans... yeah. so let's I had... go with transmutation. Though. Okay. I had one more idea that I was thinking about on the drive over here, sitting in fucking traffic. It should be a five minute drive. I was just in front of the hospital, like traffic light for. It was also like uh, those it was motherfuckers are yeah. getting yeah. sick and dying and going to the hospital when you're trying to get. Somewhere. I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> So, oh, so I thought about it this way. Outrageous. You know how, like, people, when they get put in solitary confinement, like, very quickly start losing their mind? I would. Um, so I think having a podcast, like, having a deliberate conversation about ideas is sort of the opposite of that. Because, like... Oh, I like that. When you're... Uh, yeah. I think that the way that you start... And I've done this where I spend, like, even just one whole complete day by myself. Let's say, like, have no interaction... And you start to realize, like, oh, like, your thoughts are on this automatic, repetitive, and often looping cycle. And without bouncing it off of other people in yeah. reality, it starts to take on this weird, like, it, it the, the reality checking software starts to get a little screwed up. Yeah. It's just kind so of So, like, having conversation program. is, like, you get to exercise. How do you translate the insanity that's inside your mind with yeah. with reality? Like, how do you negotiate what you're thinking and figure out... Which parts are good and which parts are fucking, like... Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. Which oh, I would say 75% of what any human brain comes up with, at least 75% for, like, smart people, is bullshit. And maybe 90% for, like, dumb people. Okay. <laughs> I don't You're know. I mean, because I, I, I feel like I'm not dumb, but, like, uh, yeah, a majority of the thoughts saying, yeah. I are just, like, selfish, like, right. stupid, like, right, nonsensical right. thoughts that my brain has. Right. Yeah. So I, I think monkey brain the conversation work. is like the opposite of solitary confinement. Like you just get to like, yeah. you get like, what, what are you willing to say out loud? Cause like a lot of what you <laughs> that, think that you're not willing question. to say out loud. That's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. Especially at well, this that's, moment. That goes to a point against it though, because in a normal healthy community, you get diversity of everything, right? Biodiversity, diversity of thought. You'll have conservative people, open-minded people, and, you know, it kind of covers everything. But if we take a big pool, like let's just say America, 
and then you give everyone in interconnected selective access like podcasting and social media. Now the one fucking pervert in your community can find all the other perverts or the one maniac can find all the other maniacs sure. or the one really loud vocal idiot that needs other idiots to shake their heads along with them can meet all those other so idiots. So you're talking like, about yeah, like I'll confirmation shake. bias. Not just that. I'm but just I mean saying, like people can find people that agree with them and form groups through the internet. Well, that's a big right. problem. I'm just, with yeah, internet, I'm just yeah. pointing out one of the big negatives to this because you're, you're making it sound all uh, rosy yeah, no, dory. So nothing's all. Is that today. an expression, rosy dory? Uh, no, it's a, the, it's a the, presidential the, quote. Who the hell? Is, Donald Trump said that, right? Yeah, he said they think you it's rosy have, yeah. dory. It's right. not rosy dory. And then we forgot. So. We don't remember what that what bullshit he was actually saying. That was in regards that's, to maybe all, it was some genius. Yeah, deflection. All we, it yeah. is genius. Because all I remember from that conversation is being like, "What's rosy dory?" Is it? Yeah, thing? what the hell? But he was saying so, some shit about like something in like it was something about it was probably like, like oh we declared war on North Korea. It was something but it's about Asia. Dory. Yeah, it was something. Some I think it was when he was in oh Asia his last trip week. to Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, no, no, it was older than that. It By the way, the date today is November 16th, 2017. We should probably say that at the beginning. I don't know so. when this will be published, but... Yeah. Um, we'll publish it uh, after post. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once, once this goes through the... Uh, the uh, so, Johnny... No, no, post. Do you say ha- things that make it sound like our, our operation's bigger. Like, once it gets bounced back from editing, we'll... Uh, Put some final touches. Up. So it really sounds like we, we put a lot more effort in than we well, did, you know? We're putting so effort. We have it's all, per- it's all about perceived value, though. You know? That's true. I mean, that's marketing 101, though, right? Like, you got a brand. Yeah, that's right, baby. Yeah. So, All right, what were you asking, Luke? I have one more thought, and then, Johnny, do you have your Would You Rather ready? Uh, I have a couple, actually. Okay, uh, so here's thought. my one last thought, and then I'll give you the floor. Um, I wrote down, in every mind, there are contradictions that, until figured out and talked about, remain contradicting. So there are things you think and believe are true but they conflict with other things you think are true. And it's only through Mm. thinking and talking and bouncing ideas around that you figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. So having said that, one of our segments here uh, from Johnny is, would you rather? And he gives us two scenarios. Both either are really good or both really suck. (laughs) But the idea isn't really about which one you pick. It's about like the fun of thinking through it and, and trying to catch like the uh you know the details like the devil's in the details so like right you're really getting into the details of whatever the situation is it's almost like um a, an exercise in thinking right and because it's a, a silly would you rather um you don't have to worry about like are you saying like should gay marriage be legal or should whatever you know it's just something simple but you get to exercise the same thought gears and like get them to spin or whatever Right. Like, if I was going to ask one, uh, it wouldn't be about gay marriage being good or bad. It would be if you had to be gay married, like, you know, would you like a larger man or small, something so that you do have to go through that <laughs> exercise. Going with this? Like, no, no, I'm just giving an example. Luke's right. Um, yeah. No, you I know, understand. That, that For the you, record, smaller. <laughs> you're a bear? You want to dominate? Okay, yeah, for the record, fine. second. Yeah, I, uh, I, anyways... <laughs> Let's, sure. let's just not uh, do that one. How about not, we do another one? I'm just saying it's not to get you to think about the way you're already thinking about it. It's a way to be like, well, if this, then what would I do? Right. And the thing that and I do this a lot just when I'm bored, uh, I'll just ask random people or it crosses my mind because I like to pose these questions to myself for the same reason. It's like a mental exercise. And sometimes I'll just mention it to somebody. And the thing that annoys me the most, more than answers that I disagree with, is when people go, I, I don't want either. And then you go, well, you have to. Try to just goad them into playing along. And they go, uh, just kill me instead then. And Do you it's know like, what that really means? Yeah, you would they're never telling choose... you they're too lazy to think. Right. You would never actually choose that option. Oh, boy, this is really tough. I'm just going to go into the fetal position and piss myself till you stomp my head in. It's like, no, you, you <laughs> wouldn't do that. Some people would, but most people, the amount of times people tell me, like, I choose neither. Yeah. Well, you can't. Well, just kill me then. It's like, well, ugh. But that's you know, when the genie just, aspect comes in. Right, so should we explain the genie aspect I think to we'll, somebody we'll who's let, never heard? I think heard? we'll let the genie happen. We'll let the yeah, genie no, I, I, I had this, that was. Yeah, I have a whole thing. Don't worry. Okay, so uh, Johnny, you, let's just give you the floor and you just yeah. describe what a would you rather yeah. is gonna, and then give it to us. Yeah, I was going to outline it all. Uh, so Luke started me off pretty well by about how it's just a hypothetical exercise. I'm not promoting anything with this. I'm not trying to get you a ha on anything. I mean, sometimes I am if it's funny, but that's not the point of it. 
Um, and really the only way these would you rather works, because the other thing that happens is people uh, just refuse to participate is they try to nitpick their way into winning. You know, so ha, I turn right, it around. Yeah. That, I if you can win in a game with right, a genie, I turn it with a genie. So, yeah. <laughs> I get, you. I get the wish, Good but luck. I don't get the curse from the monkey paw. It's like, no, no, you're going to get the curse from the monkey paw. It's all <laughs> monkey paws. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. In, order, in order for that to work, we've, we've worked it out that me posing the question, I'm sort of a wizard, a uh, demigod, type. genie type, that can just manipulate reality. So you have to focus on uh, the, the factors that I'm posing. Right in the would you rather? rather and if you don't play you along, do. you can go fuck yourself because the genie will kill you. You probably do. Yeah, it's, it's, it always, it's always worse if you don't play along. Yeah. Like this isn't my would you rather, but just a poor example. Would you rather, you know, have a dog or have a be, have a dog or have a cat live with, like sleep in your bed with you? And if you say neither, then I'm going to kill you, the dog, and the cat. So, so no, everything have, involved gets killed. Do the thing with the Romans where they throw you in the bag and then throw you in the river. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be worse for everyone. So, like, even if you want to be like, the well, morally, I shouldn't do anything, that's worse. So now you have to choose. So uh, people will try to qualify and dance around it. Uh, I'm not going to let them, but also don't think Joe and Luke are just callous psychopaths. They are, but not good for point. This, good point. Not for this reason, because they already know these rules. So that's they know fair. Just, just take so this is a thought as, experiment. Yeah. All right, this one is, would you rather be able to freeze time at will... So time stops and you can start it again. You can manipulate stuff while time's frozen, uh, but you will continue to age while everything's frozen. Or time still freezes and you don't age, but the time freezes are random. Um, it's totally random. If you're frozen from and the time that you are frozen and the frequency of freezes are both random, but uh, your average is uh, length is about a day to a year, somewhere in there. Uh, and if it's more than a year that time's frozen, you can like kickstart kick time again because that's not fair. I don't want you to be frozen for ten years and go crazy. So uh, a year is the maximum it would be frozen. Right, you could stay frozen longer if it's random. You can just let it play out. But after a year, you be like, all right, this has been long enough. Are you, you conscious stop. and literally just sitting there like you can't move? No, you 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 can move and manipulate stuff, um, but time freezes around you. And you age in that, or you don't age in that scenario. There's two options. One, you age, but you can control when time freezes. The other, you don't age, but you really uh -huh. don't have as much control about when it freezes. After a certain amount of time, I'll let you unfreeze just to make it sure. like, not terrifying. So you know? the advantage of the uncontrolled time freezing is that you can learn things in that period without aging. So if you're 22 and add up all the moments time has frozen... You could have learned ten years worth of worth of things, while everyone else was frozen. Right, but I didn't age during that time. No, you didn't. Okay. In yeah. the other version, where you control freezing, you get to stop the world where it is and do shit. Yeah. But you're aging, so if you do it right. for too long at once, in other words, in the scenario where you control it, I suppose you could never do it for too long because you would suddenly reappear to everyone else like, what the fuck? He yeah, just dude, aged you're, you're five years. you old. Yeah, like, like you look yeah, bad. Luke, you look really bad yeah. since last night. It'd be like, right. ah, I was kind of, you know, no, out of it for five years. You wouldn't do it like that. You would just be lazy. Like, you'd go out and party, and then you'd be like, oh, I got work the next day, and you'd wake up to the alarm and be like, fuck, I'm going to freeze time and sleep another couple Why hours. Why wouldn't I just freeze that time That would be the shittiest bank. usage of this superpower. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, I party too hard. You, well, first off, in this scenario, Johnny's like, I'm still going to work. <laughs> Like, you don't need yeah, to go to work. You need to figure out how to like rob like Fort Knox or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just giving an example of how you would use it in small amount. Let's say you are like climbing a mountain for Johnny's fun. like you put the yeah. bagel in the toaster oven, but you go up to take a shit, and then you realize the bagel's burning. You yeah. freeze time, freeze time, finish you your shit. shit, get back, get your bagel. Yeah. Wait, I have a question about that. If I'm taking a shit, and at what point does the shit join become not me? Time, yeah, yeah. or pee. Yeah, like yeah, as I pee, as it, it leaves my freeze? body, does it just freeze in midair? And then it would back oh, up and, and like I deflects would off of like that's the genie well, thing. That's yeah. the genie. Part. No, no, no. You're you're allowed. No, I don't. I'm not. This isn't a secretly kill you guys with your own pee uh, thing. Excrement. Yeah, that's not. This <laughs> I don't know this. that. I need you to clarify. These yeah. Things. By the way, yeah. I've always gone into any interaction with a genie with skepticism and assuming they're trying to trick me and kill me. As you should. Yeah, that's healthy. That's, that's kind of their thing historically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That, well, that's you how. Because genies aren't real. Whoa. 
Well, I mean, that's <laughs> a different warming. podcast, but <laughs> that's true. the historic of self-identifying of genies, genies <laughs> and and demons and and like you know wish granters kind of thing. It's <laughs> always some talking? kind of curse to it. You know? Here's my initial take that I'm settling on as I had the problem running in my head. I think psychologically it would be kind of damaging to have time freeze around me. Like you're sitting with your girlfriend on the couch watching a movie and all of a sudden time freezes for up to a year. Yeah. yeah. That's well, pretty crazy. Well, that might, might get to you. Yeah. But it might be a second. It might be a week. But if you could control time freezing, then all that you would really need to learn is the discipline of using it responsibly and without abusing like it enough to become like a drug that you get out of yeah. control with <clears throat> which i think i could handle more appropriately i think i could honesty. handle having the power more than psychologically figuring out how to moment, deal with yeah. random stopping right. for up to a year yeah well think about it this way though joe like anytime it froze you could spend i'm gonna go write and you can just get all your writing done yeah but how do you know you would lose like, your mind in a year wait, without I'm, talking to anybody hold, hold on let me finish my pitch though but and then when time goes back to normal, just go back to doing what you're doing. Does the internet work people... when time is frozen or photons frozen? Yeah, like I, have, I have a lot of questions, actually. No, no, you can access the internet up until that point where you froze it. So, okay. Just I... magic genie internet access? Yeah, you're going to hook me up? Like, he yeah, hooks it up had, with genie Wi-Fi? Yeah. If you had the phone out and if you had your phone on you and time froze, I guess I'd let you use it. <laughs> you guess you'd, you'd guess let me use you'd it? Let, I mean, Wait, so like, I can I can You're sitting here with you. a genie gun to our head saying, choose A or B or C, and, and be C like, is death. And be like, eh, that's a good yeah. point, I'll give it to you. Yeah, sometimes I will. Okay, all right, well. I feel like we should... <laughs> okay, so I... So, no, you were, you were right, Luke, in that it's an exercise. Like, this is just a mental exercise, but... You should keep in mind it's an exercise with like a bored omnipotent playing with mortals. Well, so, because otherwise the exercise would lose all boundaries. He's a bored on it would be like lifting <laughs> weights but not attaching the weights, you know? By having the genie who's like, you must play the game by these rules, it's like playing any board game. It's fun because you have to be creative within a set of rules. Right. If you could play Settlers dragons. of Catan and just like take a shit on the board. No. Yeah, you could say, I win, I win, and shit on the board, but that's not in the rules. You didn't win. What are you talking about? I'm Luke, saying, like, playing a board game is only fun if you win while playing the rules. Oh, I see what you're saying. I don't like, have fun cheating rules, yeah. and winning. Right. That's why well, I don't cheat. Oh, I love cheating and winning. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> okay. you, should, you should totally try it sometime. Yeah, it's really fun. So I have to say I'd choose having the power myself. Well, first of all, Luke, Dungeons and Dragons is way better than Settlers of Catan because I agree uh, the that. Dungeon Master can change the rules if it makes the game he's better. A, he's a genie, essentially. He's a he's yeah, he's a benevolent despot to improve the game. He yeah. has total control not to decide who wins just because sure. he wants to win. He like he can't win. He's there just to make the game more fun. So uh, it's not cheating, jackass. It's improving Wait, the hype. Can I ask no, no, no. I meant I meant the reason that would you rather's are fun with a genie there is because that's like the enforcing of rules in a board game. Right. Like but, it's only fun to think through this. If, it's like if Dungeons boundaries. and Dragons in that way though, where like you're kind of the, you know, master of the rules and we'll propose you to you questions, which we have and you dictate what those answers are. That's fair. So in, yeah. in a way it's an exercise for the genie brain too. I, I think so. Yeah. By the way, um, a lot of what <laughs> the nosedives that the episodes took in the beta episodes were usually us questioning Johnny's genie status and, yeah, and then convincing him that we're genies who are like checking in yeah, on yeah. genies. We're proto genies. Or we're like, like proto genies that come back and like go up I to a genie. And we're like, can we see your genie ID? We yeah. think you're faking it. Like, <laughs> I think that's why I got so defensive there, Luke. I'm sorry I called you a jackass. <laughs> you thought I was a genie cop, huh? Yeah, genie, well, undercover thought, genie cop. The genie like genie immigration genie. control <laughs> services. Like, I thought you guys were going to genie narc on me again, you know? It happens. Right. Yeah, you got to be aware of that. So Joe, I'm settling on the powers with me to stop time how about you i i agree i I'm, i like that ability to just you know what cause, because i don't need a lot of anything in my life like i like being comfortable with what i have and what i enjoy and i feel like being able to control time would just would help that a little i, bit. I would be able to you would never worry that. about money because like yeah i would rob you could Knox, freeze whatever, time and yeah. like it wouldn't be a big deal go go into a rich person's apartment and like yeah. take money from people where you i wouldn't rob people who need money right of course not yeah i wouldn't take money fact, from banks even I, because i might be taking might people's even, money i might even do some robin hood shit like rob for, like if I i'm would, robbing from well, rich people I think anyways ultimately, after a while See, i would start thinking about part. this and realize like morally we're responsible for helping people to the degree that we can right yeah. we could all do more of course but like 
Yeah. If you don't have millions of dollars, you don't have to really feel bad that you're not donating, you know, a million dollars a year to something. Yeah. But if I had the superpower, I would feel ultimately like when I thought about it enough, I would feel obligated to help people. Well, if I'm robbing rich people anyway, that's my right. Or maybe like I go to like war torn countries and like freeze time and like try to get evil dictators out of power. uh, It sounds like a whole thing. Well, then then you run the risk of that like Superman becoming evil thing because like power corrupts you. But that would work better than if you chose the random time freezing because then you couldn't go because you would be like well i could go to this foreign country and eliminate but it might sticker. unfreeze when unfreeze I'm, like, as I'm like in saddam hussein's back, cave i'm like, like fuck you motherfucker yeah. and it's like uh-oh like time just unfroze and i'm about to like kill yeah. this guy and it's like that's, that's not gonna work true. out for you yeah so i wouldn't well, want to have the control yeah I, I want i want the control johnny too. did we fuck up is that a good answer no no those are good answers i just want to raise some points maybe you didn't consider which is uh <laughs> he's changing the, the rules one, the, no no the one where you think you know oh yeah i age but i could i control when i freeze time so i just won't misuse it i'll be responsible what if you realize wow i really can do a lot of good like i could go around and, and like fix a lot of things in society and, uh, i'm not uh, looking age, to do you know? that much work with my power yeah you don't think what, so are no. you saying that but that would like, turn into like, like corruption like, eventually well like you said like once you use it to make a lot of money then you know are you really never going to use it unless no, you're you would probably a joe i i bet even if you spent a whole year using it selfishly, you would start to be like, "Look, I have this ability. Yeah, I, I have so. to be yeah. a moral person." No, I, I, I think I think yeah. I would lean I would lean towards like doing good good shit with it. Yeah, because like, Same. you know, wh- like why wouldn't I? Like, it doesn't take also that much because effort. like the more I research and the more I experience life, it seems like the more you do for other people, the more energy you just give out. Yeah, um, it actually makes your life overall, better too. Yeah. You can call that Absolutely. selfish, really, because you're actually making like yourself happier when you're like using the power that you have to to try and do good instead of like because you all know there's a way to live your life which is being the worst thing possible that's really close to it like here um so like if you do anything remotely like opposite of like what you know could be considered the worst way to live your life then like it's pretty good if you had a superpower, you'd be thinking, all right, I have way more of a responsibility to do, like, good things now that I have this right. ability. So you just have to be careful not to get corrupted by it. But that's all power. I trust myself. I I, I, I asked my girlfriend this recently, like, um, uh, you know, would you rather win the lottery or not win the lottery? I think question. she answered win the lottery. And I, I was just saying that, like, I'd be worried about having, like, $100 million. I would not. I would be worried. So In other words, like, if you asked it's me not. would I rather have $100 million so or, easy like, to deal with, $1 million, I could be just as happy with $1 million as $100 million. I would take $100 million, though. But I, I would just be slightly... I, I would want to really work out in my head... But even, how how to go into it with a plan, it's like, so that I don't But even worst case up. scenario, what you could do, give away $99 million. That's how you could deal with it. I know, that. No, I know, but I know. No, because the problem with winning the lottery, winning $100 million is everyone knows you're that guy in town True. that won the $100 million. So, you, you know, your life has changed totally. You have to move. You know, you can't just live in your house to, like, and, and you know, someone was going to fucking rob you at some point, like, you know, or, or, or try to hostage. Or, yeah, try to kidnap or whatever, you. whatever, like, yeah. You can't just hang out yeah. with your same neighbors. That are but like, you've got money oh, to pay so. for security now. I noticed. Yeah, yeah or buy multiple have... houses. Yeah. Or multiple have... towns. Yeah, buy now a town. Have... Now you have to have security around you. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, you have to, yeah, you have to travel a shitload. Like, if you happen to enjoy your life and your job and, you you know, that $100 million might be worse, like Luke said. I, I do have a, a very quick, if we have time, uh, fact or fiction. I also have a uh, mind-blowing oh, we'll get scientific fact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll do it all. So, I, I, I mean, if if we have time for these segments, because we... We can are, fit them in. Are we, yeah. are we doing all, all three? How much time do we have left? Are we doing all three segments? Can we do it? I think we can get it in, yeah. We can we can get it in? All right, let's yeah. try it. We can try We, we can do it in 15 minutes. Let's, uh, let's do it. Well, anything I'm else we can edit minutes. in post. It's fine. That's sure. true. We can always do all it All right, so, so you just got a taste for, like, one segment. Basically, Johnny would always hang out with us and ask us, would you rather? That's how this became, like, a, a pretty consistent thing. I think it's a, a, a fun way to exercise thinking when it's not tied to reality. It's not something political. It's not like deciding, 
in your own life. Should I take this job or this job? Should I go to this college or this college? You can like sort of have more flexibility of thinking when it's like, um, you know, something that's not actually attached to reality other than through a genie. Yeah, (laughs) that's fair. So uh, next segment, Joe gives us a fact or or a fiction. And we don't know. Take it away, Joe. (laughs) So the way to figure this out is for Johnny and Luke to discuss, is this in fact a fact or is it a fabrication? In fact, a fiction. (laughs) Oh, man, we're getting thunk. Um, Oh, I'm getting so thunked. (laughs) Yeah, I'm feeling a little thunky. Uh, So here's your your fact or perhaps not. The budget to send the Curiosity rover to Mars. So the whole project, right? Right. For anyone who doesn't know, Curiosity is the name of the rover they launched to Mars. It's about the size of an SUV. It's and big. Yeah. Um, I think it was 2013. It was pretty recent. Yeah, it was Something a, like that. a few years ago. Yeah, um, I, It might be the biggest rover they've launched. I think it is, actually. It was definitely the coolest, the it's, way it landed cool. with like a parachute. Well, and, then, and it had propulsion landing. And, right? then, and then a propulsion landing to yeah. like slow it down. And yeah. then a sky crane yeah. where the rover was inside of this yeah. thing it that lowered shit. it yeah. onto the ground gently. Yeah. And then that thing crash landed itself. Yeah, it separates and then just gets the Because it's fuck hard out of to there, slow yeah. down in, on the atmosphere of Mars because it's very thin. It's kind of a worst case You don't get a lot of resistance. Because like you still have to deal with the heat. The you friction? still deal with the heat, but you don't slow down. Enough. You don't slow yeah. down with parachutes. Yeah. So if the, if it yeah. hit the ground if, at, without any of these slowing down techniques, it would just destroy the spacecraft. Yeah. Which has happened to which this. would waste how much money, Joe? Well, so here's the thing: <laughs> the budget to send the Curiosity rover to Mars is less than the worldwide military expenditure in one hour. Okay, Johnny, I know another fact, and I want to see how you think it ties in. Okay. Um, do you think, one, do you think, okay, here's the fact, and then I'll ask you what you think. The fact is, I happen to know that, like, um, I think it was one month of military spending in the Middle East outspends the entire running budget of NASA since it was founded. Mm -hmm. Really? So, is the funding for Curiosity only coming from NASA? Because I know there's like JPL, LAT, like all these other divisions. Are they under the NASA budget umbrella? Or could like more money be coming from more places? Uh, I'm sure there's money from more places, but uh, most of it would be coming under NASA. Okay, so that would mean that almost... Joe said that um, the budget for Curiosity was less than one day of military spending? No, one hour of one. worldwide military spending. For, by the whole world? Yeah, so if you okay. add up the Middle East, the United States, Russia, China. 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 Everybody China. else. I have a fourth grade student who, who was, <laughs> when I said like something about, I don't know why I was talking about China, but I said the word China, and uh, he looked at me and goes, China. <laughs> I was like, he right just, on, kid. He just said that? Yeah. He just looked at me and said, he doesn't speak almost ever, but he looked at me and said, China. Is he supposed to speak? When I ask him questions, he basically just looks at me. China. And then says something like, um, I don't know. All right. So he usually <laughs> says the words, I don't know. Oh, okay. And then what he doesn't he say, I Oh, no, know. I wasn't saying I don't know what he says. I do. It's fucking <laughs> terrible. He just says, I don't know. Even if I say... Can you say any other words except I don't know? And he looks at me and says, I don't know. Have you actually had that conversation? Yeah, of course. And then the only other time he says anything is China? Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I'm coming from here, Oh, Joe. man, that's, that's, that's deep in the hole. All right, so, Joe, read the, the fact or fiction one more time before I decide. <laughs> sure. The budget to send the Curiosity rover to Mars is less than the worldwide military expenditure in one hour. I say Fact. Fact. Because world, I'm okay, Johnny. What do you think? I know the U.S. spends a lot on military, like, like way more than the next person on the list, or something, right? I think it's. I think we spend more than the, the, the nine people below I, us. I think I remember reading it's like one percent of the GDP, like, global GDP, because it's like a lo- it's like a lot of our percent. So I could either be way off with this, thinking that all these other countries are spending a lot and they're not, or I could be onto it enough to say like the top 10 military countries u.s russia israel turkey like that they're all spending enough 
because the the Curiosity rover is not cheap. Like you or I couldn't send it. No, that's but true. It's also nothing compared to like going to war. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to say true. I, I I think it really depends a lot on who's putting these numbers together. Because like China's I, yeah, they, China's military is their space program. Like they don't they don't have they don't separate agencies. those two. Yeah. Yeah, but that but there the billions they spend on putting rockets and stuff up uh, probably because they're planning on going to the moon by like 2022 or something. Uh, that probably isn't being counted as military expenditure. It's probably being counted as space stuff too. Yeah, that becomes um, an important distinction. Yeah, because that's where they spend most of their yeah. money. They have a shitload of tanks, but they don't really need it. Like they're working on like that on like rockets to shoot down satellites and stuff. They have sure. all that shit. Yeah, uh, and like this Russia going cyber to space program. to be like, oh gee, like what's the meaning of the universe? They're like, and how do we yeah. get high ground? Yeah. Do the Russian cyber farms count as military expenditure, or are they just counting Fair tanks enough. and jeeps? So Johnny's gonna attack you up. in the details. <laughs> so I'm just saying. What's your answer though? More or less, like this. assuming that it's like the most well done, logically consistent way to total this, these numbers. So that it costs the and then the mission he can tell us where he got it from. The mission to Mars costs less than one hour of spending. That was the question. That was entire the entire global spending on yeah. mi- anything military related. Yeah, I would say yeah. Even though I do know that it has, because um, they had solar panel issues with the one they sent before it, it got s- dust on the panels and it just didn't run for like months. But I think I think it's something storm. like it's not a lot. I think it's something like thirteen billion is the cost of like Curiosity, something is like it? that. Yeah, and I can see that. So, I know we spend a hundred. I know we spend like something crazy every day in in just the Middle East, the U.S. alone. Yeah, and it's like in the billions. So yeah. they had like sixty billion dollars go missing. Right, just and cat, it wasn't a like big deal. It was like cat. it was talked about, but it wasn't like a yeah. big deal. I miss. I I lose a twenty dollar bill and I'm just like freaking out around the house. Like I know <laughs> I have a twenty dollar yeah. bill somewhere, but I was like lazy with yeah. putting it in my wallet. And I just put it in a pocket or something, you know? Yeah. But then but, when you but, find it, that's gold. The, the Curiosity rover it. had if a built-in... Usually it takes a whole season where you have to go into an old winter jacket. That's what jacket. happened to me with the flask in my winter jacket the yeah, other yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curiosity had, had a built-in nuclear reactor so that it could run on its own internal energy. Right. So you, you have to remember that, that yeah. we sent an internal nuclear battery to Mars. The size of an SUV. Stuff and it has, it. like, a science lab on it where it collects the ground from Mars and then analyzes it chemically to see what's going on. True. So you said pretty amazing when you think about it. Dude, that's, that's some sci-fi shit right there, but it's real. It's which is great. Yeah. That's really cool. We threw this spacecraft at Mars, like a football, right? You don't throw it to where Mars is. You throw it to where Mars is going to be. I think it's like something about 18 months before close to like half the probes slash Mars uh, slash rovers that we've sent to Mars have crashed. Like a lot of them haven't worked, and oh, some of that okay. some of that is the. I don't know that number. I know we have a lot of that. We is have inc- four that work there, or something like well, that. Well, a lot right? of that is including like Russian shit in like the seventies, oh. right? Or like you know, shit. crazy. Yeah. I can't even. Sometimes I can't even. I'm I'm laying in bed and I can't even think of a way that I'm about to like get dressed and make coffee and breakfast yeah. and get to work right. on time. You know, like people are sending and people are sending shit landing SUVs on Mars. to Mars like. <laughs> Fuck me, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So, yeah. anyways, what's what's the truth here, Joe? So, what did you say, Johnny? You said yes, no. Same yeah. as me, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, in fact, the budget is actually, and I I think that this does highlight a very interesting fact, which is that the United States is like the primary spender of like military budget globally. Yeah. And in fact, I, I forget what I mentioned earlier, but I'll reiterate because the way I remember is that. The United States, I, I forget the exact military budget, but I know that it's our military budget is about one percent of the like global GDP, like all the products produced in the world. Yeah, like one percent of that is the U.S. Is, military is military spending on the United US, States military, whether products or right. salaries yeah, or exactly. So that's a lot of it. So when you think of NASA's budget in regards to the federal budget, like a big part of that budget is already that military budget, right? Sure. So, in fact, the Curiosity rover cost about 12 hours of huh. worldwide total military expenditure. So it was actually pretty expensive. So, but it was, it was, um, let me get this straight. 
So like we were right. Day. We were right. Uh, what did I say? You said that. No, the... I said less than an hour. Oh. That's so sad, though, because that means that if we just so stop curiosity being... costs twelve hours. Yes, you... which is a good. Do you that, know? I Johnny, thought you said a, a good... day. That, that... I thought you said a day. <laughs> but Johnny, that's a great point. That is sad because if, if, if we spent just... if we if spent we... a tenth as much as we do on military, and we put that towards this crazy cool shit, we would we would be fucking in the cosmos, man. Like hard. If we made it like a, such a, a benefit financially yeah. for people to like figure out new science things. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if well we said. had, if we had like an, an actual like Olympics week where just all military spending and resources for a week every year went towards space exploration. That's yeah, why I love the X prize. They Mars assemble already. money together and then offer people like, Oh, the X prize is great. That's uh, what they, a billi- sh- a, whatever million dollars to somebody who can solve this one specific problem. And then is that teams, a Google thing? Um, it's, it's yeah. this guy, I'm forgetting his name, but that's what they did in uh that's what Johnny, it's that's... not specifically a Google thing though. It's, it's something called the X prize that but this the, guy, that's what the, uh, that's what they did in like, um, in like, you know, back in the day when they were like, Johnny, you remember reading about the longitudinal prize? Oh yeah. The long- to try yeah. to, to try to figure out like longitudinal mapping for like navigation. They just and, put like, out a bunch of, no governments were Wait, like, well, isn't it the same as putting out like, um, a reward, a ransom reward for, I yep. mean, not, not a ransom, but, um, a reward bounty. for like a bounty. Yeah. yeah. It's the same yeah. as that, right? Yeah. Cause it's like, like, we put a bounty out on reality. Well, cause they're like, this, this, would, this would be problem. hugely economically beneficial. Yeah. So fuck yeah. We'll give you 10 it's whatever, the government. Right. million dollars. We'll make way more than dollars. that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's worth it. If you can figure that out. Absolutely. I believe it was, Funny. A ten thousand pound prize for the long- longitude, and yeah. the guy that discovered, of course, got fucked out of the actual reward. Yeah, well, uh, that's the error of that. Uh, what know, was the ex- cost of Curiosity rate. Rover in numbers? Did you say? Uh, I, uh, I don't think it actually says the the total cost here. But Why are you wondering? Because you're curious. Oh no, I just wanted to like just like <laughs> um, tag uh, it in my memory. I, I just like because I, I I'll I'll look it up for you. Yeah. Um. So the other Such a cool rover. the other segment that we uh, try to get to in this podcast is, uh, for some reason, in a period in my life, I got obsessed with astrophysics and like reading about space and astronomy and all that shit, and so that became a a, a big part of like what I read and care about. And so like my natural contribution on this front was like bring some kind of fact about like science, something like mind blowing. Uh, that can blow your brain like Rick and Morty style. Sort of like uh, reset your calibration of like meaning in life when you can learn some crazy fact about reality, about like a, a something in science that can blow your mind, basically. Which there's plenty of material there. And that's Luke's segment. And that's, that's whatever this segment is. So um, I'm going to start you off on this segment with a tweet from a physicist and then kind of we can we can just talk about it and talk about how cool it is ready for the tweet yeah all right this is a tweet by brian green he's a professor of physics and mathematics at columbia university he tweeted (laughs) perfect uh uh, rick and morty burp timing (laughs) so he tweeted Remove all the space within the atoms making up the human body, and every person that's ever lived would fit inside a baseball. Now, Joe, when I read that, guess what the first question my brain came up with was? How big is a baseball? No. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. I know how big a baseball is. I've held one many times. Okay. Uh, What? My question was, well, how many people have ever lived? Oh, I'm going to... How do you count that? I'm going to guess, like, 50 billion. So, turns out that um, there's something called the Population Reference Bureau. and That so sounds like bullshit. The, I know. Not, yeah. <laughs> look, folks, I, did, I don't get paid enough to research this, like, really well, so... That's just, that, that's uh, just the PRB, I'm a, I'm gonna which is just... That you're just switching PBR to PRB, real. so fuck you. But, how, okay, how many people would you say are on Earth right now? Uh, like uh, close to seven and change billion. So, yeah, it's like seven point four billion. Is it okay? It, it hit seven billion like it did, five yeah. years ago, four okay. years ago, something yeah. like that. So uh, there's about seven point something billion people now. They start measuring the population from fifty thousand BC. Okay. 
it's hard to say when like humans exist. That's yeah. a whole issue in biology. Yeah. Called speciation. Like when does one species become a new species? Right, right. You had all these hominid versions of like Neanderthals and cavemen type things. Right. And they all branched off in different directions. I think around 300 million years ago, we branched off with like what became chimpanzees to give right. you an idea of like the time scale here. Right. So in 50,000 years, about 108 billion people have lived. Wow. That's now, I that's a lot of people, right? How many people does Yankee Stadium hold? Uh, probably 50,000, maybe. Right. Close, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Do I even it. have to look that up? Let's no, just... it's close to it. Yeah. It's close to it. Yeah. So 50,000 is... And you can picture that. So small compared to 100 billion. Uh, do you know, like, the percentage? Um, 50,000. Oh, no. 500,000. Oh, boy. 50 million. Oh, 500 boy. million. I'm going to go to the calculator on this can one. Can you just do that? I don't want to embarrass my. Like, <laughs> as you, as you're counting with... on your fingers, yeah. you're just like. Joe's like, uh, how is can you get counting this? on his fingers with millions? <laughs> like, how is it? Hundreds of millions. <laughs> So, as Joe does this math, the I'm point is, the, like... Um, well, what's nuts about that is it means in the last 50,000 years, 10% of all humans are alive right now. Sure. It so, just shows you how exponential the, population... It's 2 million is. Yankee stadiums, by the way. Okay, so it's Yankee 2 million stadiums. Yankee stadiums filled with people. Yeah. Which is insane. That's how many people have ever lived, humans, yeah. have ever lived in the history of of the... Uh, hopefully, you're not listening to this and thinking the Earth is 6,000 years old started by Adam and Eve or something. Well, you probably drink Heineken at um, that point. No, you probably don't even drink Heineken. That's a shame. So, so basically, this tweet is saying that... How many Yankee stadiums? Two million. Two million Yankee stadiums worth of people, or 108 billion people, if you got rid of the space inside of the atoms of all the atoms that composite those people all those people all of those people yeah you would have a baseball sized object wow and so really what it's saying is that um everybody sort of takes away That's i was thinking cool. today like everybody takes away from their high school chemistry class that we're made of atoms they might even take away that atoms combine to form um different elements oh i didn't get that at all from his uh from chemistry right? class i just kind of wanted lunch and then elements can combine to form chemicals, right? So Yeah, it's like a, a but we, you move up. Would you there, agree yeah. that most people take away that atoms are like the building blocks of matter? That's kind of the base unit. Sure. Yeah. And then if you take it a little further, Even you might learn like about the uh, Rutherford gold foil experiment where he shot alpha particles at a, a piece of gold foil and tried to measure if they got deflected or not. Right. And what he found out is like most of them go through unaffected, mm -hmm. but that a few of them get deflected by like 90 degrees. And that's because they were hitting the nucleus of the atoms. Yeah, that's cool. And so what it, it proved is that we have um, an atom has protons and neutrons in the nucleus, but it's a very small area compared to the size of the atoms with its electrons, which are right. around it. So yeah. if you were to make the nucleus of an atom the size of a peanut, you would place that in the center of like a football stadium, and the football stadium would be the size of of the entire atom with maybe it's two, three, four, five electrons. So yeah. most of the atom... How big are the electrons in this analogy? Um, so that's where it gets complicated. Um, but let's say that they're about... They're so small, you wouldn't... Even, they're like less than particles of dust in this scenario, right? And the okay. rest of it is empty space. Right, right. Now, the truth of it is that quantum mechanics says that electrons are everywhere and nowhere, right? They have these wave functions of, like, probability clouds called orbitals. Um, so it gets kind of complicated with that angle where technically there is no empty space if an electron could be anywhere, right? Right, yeah. But, but the probability <clears throat> shapes show, like, these little orbitals around the nucleus where electrons are most likely to be found and almost a zero probability of them to be found in between these little nodes, kind of. They're like nodes of empty space where like you won't find an electron, right. even though like theoretically it's possible. Yeah, sure. So the idea is if you crunched away all of that empty space between electrons and between the electrons and the nucleus, you would be able I to see, fit yeah. all the atoms into Wait, but, a baseball. But including the nuclei? Yeah. So how many peanuts fit inside a baseball? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, that's different. That's Luke different. is not ready Wait. to handle that question. <laughs> Wait, with the shell or unshelled? Yeah, or are they roasted? No, no, no. One peanut unshelled. Oh, just just a half a nut. Here. In fact, I have oh a my thing God, of you peanuts have right one. here. Did you just pull a can of yeah. peanuts out of your bag? Yeah. Can I have some of those? Yeah. those actually well, we shouldn't good. eat peanuts until we uh, finish the episode, but okay. this We're so close. I'm that. holding so a peanut. But that's a whole peanut. <laughs> uh, he's literally, ladies and gentlemen, Luke is, is literally, ha he literally has his I always out. carry dry roasted peanuts unsalted in my bag. That's a Are, very strange you, sentence. You guys still have an answer. Is it shelled or unshelled? Unshelled. It's unshelled. Okay, that's not a full peanut then, all right? <laughs> Fair enough. This, this, is getting visual, very aggressive. this isn't a visual media. Don't describe food by showing it and then eating it. That's the worst thing you can do. <laughs> no one wants to hear you eat and say, yeah, well, see, look, this is I it. don't want to hear shit about you telling people not to eat on the air, Mr. Hamburglar. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, you, if you're listening to this, you probably know that atoms exist, but you might not have known that, that electrons around the center of the atom it, uh, they they occupy these like shells. They're called orbitals, and they have these different energy levels to them. And so they fill up lower energy shells, and then fill up like farther and farther from the nucleus. And they also have these certain like spins, and th like two can. I There's a lot of rules. I'm I'm not. Well, we, I'm we, kind we of dusty it, on yeah. it. I it's been a while since I took chemistry, but um, the main point is like. The, like okay so yes the atom is mostly empty space and you could like get rid of that empty space and fit so much into so little right what the the thought that came to my mind was the idea that when you touch something you're never actually touching it yes when that, you sit on a chair yeah. you're not actually sitting on the chair you're actually hovering microscopically above the chair in a sense because that empty space in the atoms of the chair and of your leg is being maintained and what's actually holding you up, what you feel as resistance from the chair, what you feel as the solidness of the chair is actually the repulsion of the chair's outer electrons with your leg and pants and, and, and shit, that outer electron field. And you're actually microscopically hovering above that. And that's what we call touching that's what we call like a solid yeah but how do you know have you actually seen that fair point no <laughs> fair enough i don't that you might have what? to be episode two. um my mom i was at my mom's uh for dinner recently and um oh boy uh she was we were talking about something something she was doing on like an online application for something and i was helping her I think that's what it was and <laughs> she said like whatever i said something and she was like oh are you sure and I thought to myself, like, I was just in the right state of mind. I was like, Mom, I'm not even, I'm not sure about anything. We could be in a simulation. Like, I don't, so no, I'm not you're sure. Like, I'm not going to go there. I'm though. not sure, but, like, I think so. Yeah. Like, so, like, if you're asking me, am I sure, because you want to be able to, like, like, uh -huh. aha, you want to aha me, yeah. it's like, you no, know, I give yeah. you that. So, and this is my new thing. Whenever somebody says, like, are you sure? Like, you know, like, somebody says, like, hey, uh, you know, what time is this event tomorrow? And you're like, oh, it's at like 7.30. And they're like, are you sure it's are not sure at 8? Like and I'm Thursday? like, no, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not even sure that I'll wake up tomorrow. Like, So like, stop yeah. asking that question. Nobody should be yeah. sure of anything. Yeah. I don't want you to come <laughs> back and be like, you son of a bitch. So Joe, you're what wrong. does it uh, do to your uh, brain to think that, uh, to think of, of things on the scale of like electrons and like orbital clouds and like hovering on electrons that like, you never actually touch anything? I kind of still just want a sandwich. Mm -hmm. I was thinking either way, like I'm getting kind of hungry for dinner. Either way, I kind of want a sandwich, <laughs> yeah. And I think, honestly, that's the beautiful thing about life is that, yeah. like uh, Morty says in Rick and Morty, the cartoon, he says, like, like everybody dies, nobody exists on purpose, come watch TV with me. Yeah, and that's it's the like, premise. It's yeah. like even... Sure. Even if you admit the ridiculousness of life, which is like you can have the knowledge that we're just made of these things called atoms with electrons. And then when you combine them, they make chemicals and those chemicals, some of them are called vitamins and they and some of them are called oxygen and like and your cells and like all of this is working together and your brain's making you who you are. Right. And all of that's happening. It's like you can recognize how ridiculous it is that that is 
it's also the really, case. And, and it's, but I'm still going to go eat dinner and like yeah, watch TV. That's what I mean. It's like, ridiculous not to just be like, I also still want a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, there's a, a paper by, um, fuck, what's the philosopher? But it, it was on, um, it was just on this topic of like um, absurdity, you know? Yeah. Like the human condition is just absurd. Yeah. And it was like, I, um, it was just on a very bad wizards. It's a, another podcast episode. They were just talking Promotion. about absurdity, yeah. and um, it is absurd. It is absurd yeah. to know that every human who ever lived could fit inside a baseball. That's absurd, especially if they're peanuts. And so, like next time you're about to like um, send some like nasty text or nasty email to somebody, just think about the fact that you're you could be crammed inside, inside a of a baseball and with hundred other billion yeah. with two million Yankee stadiums worth of people. You fucking asshole! Stop being an angry like dick. <laughs> Wow. That's my message. That's beautiful. Johnny, what, what do you think about the electrons? Yeah, I'm for them. <laughs> I hope so. That's such a, that's such a like, You don't get to bipartisan... eat like a cheeseburger if you're yeah. not for electrons. It's yeah, no, I'm, pro, I'm pro electrons. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of unpacked it. You know, I don't, I don't have much else to add. Fair enough. Because, you know, that was, that's Luke's uh, random science fact. Uh, you nailed it. Yeah. This this used to be yeah. a much worse version of Luke's science fact was when I was younger, I would be, let's say, more drunk and just like <laughs> yelling science at people. Yeah. But this is yeah. your unpacking. Honestly, I think at, at like the age of my early 20s, I had no like religious aspect to my life. So when I started That's getting fair. into science, yeah. it sort of became like it filled that hole of like religion in a way yeah, you know right like something that you could get really into and get into the facts and details yeah. of but without mm. feeling yeah. um you know feeling like you're lying to yourself yeah anywho uh science is real that yeah. electrons are real and if you really want to get uh, geeky about this google something like electron orbitals and you can kind of learn about how electrons arrange themselves around um, the nuclei of atoms. I'll tell you what, we can talk more about it in episode two. That's true. So I think uh, that's Joe's cue to say we're, I guess we're at like an hour 20, which we're is good, yeah. pretty good considering good. all the beta episodes went drunkenly like three hours. over three yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah, I think we're good, yeah. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're good. I'm on beer two, which is like perfect. Usually perfect, we, yeah. we've tried starting episodes like four beers in. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's when we get really funky. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe one day if if um, we have like a Patreon and like uh, subscribers are paying enough money, we'll get we can there. like release yeah. some of tapes. those beta tapes. Yeah. I I think we're all good people, so none of what we said, if taken uh, well, in well, context, yeah. will be bad. Yeah. But um, we'll, we get we'll pretty ridiculous those. when we're we'll, when we're we'll save out. those until we're able to edit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also we should listen to them first. <laughs> well, that's probably a great idea. Yeah. It's more likely the they're just terrible. Yeah. I, I've um, mostly not listened to them, and it's more likely yeah. uh, it's just terrible, as you said. Yeah. All, All right. right then. Any parting? Uh, any parting words? I would just like to say thank you for joining us. Yeah. If you if you're listening now, truly thank yeah. you. Um, we enjoy. By the you know, Johnny moved away. We we used to all live by each other. Yeah. This is sort of an excuse for us to like hang out as if Johnny still lived here. But we'll have more. We'll have much more content to bring to you very soon. Yeah, and yeah. if you, yeah. um, I don't know, maybe by the time we publish it, we'll we can make like a a Gmail email. Um, we'll have a thing. Podcast. We'll something. have a thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, a thing. Thing. yeah. we'll um, have a thing. Yeah, we'll have a thing. I would love questions. for anybody listening to reach out and like. Just to know people are listening will help motivate making more. Yeah. It took Comments, us a while to make this first one because... We were drunk. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and also, yeah. it's hard to schedule the time. But, like, if you know people are listening, you're yeah. more likely to do it. And also, like, I would love to have, like, people listening give ideas of what we should talk about. Yeah, that would be great. Cause, like, we'll I, have uh, guests, too. We dude, yeah, guests. that would be great. Yeah. Like, let's just get, like, a qualified yeah. guest on a certain topic. I know, like, coffee roasters. I know people that work at Google... I, yeah, I know a lot of like people that are way smarter and more yeah. qualified than me, and I yeah. I'd, I'd like to bounce there's, there's ideas off of them. There's some good people that we could bring in, definitely. So yeah. so we want people's feedback, we want people's suggestions, and we want people to write in and tell us why they think Luke sucks, right? Yeah, uh, I mean I'm I sure that will happen everything. anyways. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I think one of the scary things about putting yourself out on the internet is you're opening up your, yeah. like, it's even if it's there, just a yeah. P.O. box, yeah. like, right? Yeah. You just, like, no, make a there. fake yeah, identity you're, you're on the, the internet. Floodgates, you're yeah. opening the floodgates yeah. to just hear all the yeah. noise and all the miserable yeah. suffering that is human existence. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but we had nothing else to do, so. Yeah, okay. no, really. It's Thursday. And, like, uh, it'd be cool, like, even, like I said, always, like, imagine, like, uh, we make $20 per episode, and that just pays for, like, the six-pack of beer that me and Joe split. That's ideal. Yeah. And that should pay for two six-packs of beer, at least, but you you get the idea. Sex-packs? Okay. I think we're done here. (laughs) Yeah. All right. (laughs) All right. right. Signing off. Thunk Tank podcast. And we look forward to seeing you next time. But down, 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 down. No, we'll that? fill that in in the post. Well, post, yeah. post. Take, take care of it, post. So, Peace. right before we oh. fade out. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That Wait, was Johnny you, hanging up on us. I didn't hit stop. No. So, <laughs> so jokes on Johnny. He always does this trick where he'll, like, pretend to uh, be... Have something very profound to say. Continuing a sentence, yeah. but he'll actually um, hang up. So, now we'll give the real closure. So, thank you for joining us. Fuck Johnny. See you episode two. We'll see you episode two. Thank you.